able, able to fulfill his promises in your life. God is able. God is able to make you accomplish everything that he wants you to accomplish in life. Hand over yourself to him and say, Lord, you are the God that is more than able to take my weaknesses away. More than able to heal my wounds and remove my infirmities. You are more than able to settle and to establish me in life. You are able, O oh God, and more than able, more than able to make me succeed in every area and aspect of life. You are more than able to destroy the works of darkness in my life. You are more than able, able to hold my hand lest I fail, to hold my hand lest I fall. To hold my hand, lest I falter. You are more than able to preserve my home and family. You are more than able to take the blemishes of my life away. You are more than able to take the sorrows and the sadness away. You are more than able, more than able to meet the needs of my life, to meet the needs of my family. You are more than able, oh God, more than able to preserve me unto your glory eternal. You are more than able to keep me pure, to keep me holy, to keep me righteous. You are more than able, more than able to, me, to make me live a life acceptable unto you, more than able. More than able, more than able, Lord, I'm counting on you. You brought me this far not to leave me alone. You brought me this far not to abandon me. You brought me this far not to disappoint me. You brought me this far not to put me to shame. You are more than able. Able God, come for me. Able God, take control. Able God, have your way. Able God, hold my hand. More than able, more than able. More than able to bring your promises to fulfillment in my life. You are more than able, O oh Lord, O oh God of heaven, to put my enemies to shame. You are more than able, you are more than able to disappoint all the strategies of the wicked one. You are more than able, more than able to give me testimony in this area of my life and in every other areas of my life. You are more than able, O oh God, able God, able God, come into my life. Able God, take charge of my life. Able God, make my life to count. Make my life to count. Uh, you are more than able. Oh Lord, oh God, uh, that my life and living will not be in vain. You are more than able. Able, 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 able. Oh Lord, oh God, to keep me standing. To keep me strong. Uh, to keep me pure. To keep me holy. To keep me righteous. You are more than able. Tell him, able able, 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 more than able to save my soul. You are more than able to give me the spirit of prayer and the power of prayer. Children pray, youth pray. You are more than able, able, oh God of heaven, I count on you to deliver my children from the powers of darkness. You are more than able, more than able to deliver my household, more than able, oh Lord, oh God of heaven, to put the enemy to shame concerning my situation, you are more than able, oh God of heaven, to turn my night to day, to turn my sorrow to rejoicing. You are more than able, dear Lord God, able, able, oh God, I come on you, able God, I come on you, mighty God, you are more than able, have your way, able God, have your way, able God, take control, able God, build your church, able God, build my life, able God, able God, 
provide every need of my life for me. Oh God of heaven, you are more than able. You are more than able. You are more than able. I depend upon you. I count on you. I trust in you. I hold on unto you. I hold not the rock, but the rock hold my hands. The rock holds my hand. The rock of salvation. The rock of preservation. The rock of protection. The rock of power. The rock of purpose. The rock, the rock, the rock that never fail. I am leaning on you. Let me not fail. Let me not fall. Let me not falter. In the name of Jesus, fill my heart with joy. Fill my mouth with testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are more than able to turn my situation around. You are more than able, more than able, more than able, more than able, more than able to meet the needs of my life, to fulfill the desires of my heart. You are more than able, no Lord, oh God, to deliver, to deliver, to suffer, to liberate. You are more than able, you are more than able, you are more than able, more than able, more than able to give me victory in all the areas of the challenges of life. You are more than able to deliver me. You are more than able to set me free. You are more than able to guide my steps. You are more than able to direct my path. You are more than able to give me victory. More than able, more than able, more than able to prevent me. Oh Lord of God, from going back to the world. More than able, more than able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked in my life. All the fairy darts of the wicked in our church. All the fairy darts of the wicked around us. You are more than able, 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 able. In Jesus name we pray. Precious Father, we come before you today. Acknowledging and realizing our weakness without you. We know Lord God of heaven but our life and our being is by the power of your mind. You have the purpose in mind before you created us. Oh Lord, and you are able. You are more than able to fulfill those purposes in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God of heaven, we hand over ourselves unto you and pray, O Lord, that every area of weakness in our lives you will remove them. O Lord, O God, you will turn our weaknesses to strength in Jesus' name. You will turn the failures of our lives unto successes in the name of Jesus. Father, speak to us, O Lord. To everyone under the sound of my voice, give us testimony. Dear Father, give us testimony. Make our life to count. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need a better one. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. It's a pleasure having you back in the house of the Lord. Today we are looking, understand that this is the month that the nation has set aside for thanksgiving. And a man that will know how to praise the Lord is a man that knows how to receive from the Lord. A man that knows how to bless the Lord is a man that knows what it means for a life to count. It's a man that knows, when I say man, I'm being generic whether you're a man or you're a woman, you are such a person that knows the value of life, that your life matters and that your life counts. A man that knows how to worship the Lord is the man that knows so that the life he lives impacts others and that and the lives of other people are impacting his life is a life with eternity value attached to it is a life that is not just about how long but how well the life is such a person is the one that knows how to praise the lord he's the one that knows how to worship the lord he's the one that knows the 
essence of touching other lives and being touched by other lives uh, is such a life with a purpose. Uh, is such a life that is blameless. Uh, is such a life that glorifies the name of the Lord uh, and blesses humanity. The question is, will your generation ever rejoice uh, that you were manifest or regret that you were manifest? That is, that you were incarnated, uh, that you ever live at all with the world that knew you, with the world that met you, with the people that had the encounter with you, ever rejoice that you have been a blessing in their life or regret that you are a sorrow and sadness in their life. I declare today, in the name of Jesus, your life will matter. Your life we can't. In the name of Jesus, we are looking today at the message, the life that comes. The life that comes. Shall we all say that together? Turn to someone and say, your life will count. Say, your life will count. Announce before yourself with your hands. Raise up and say, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Lord, my life will count. My life will matter. I will be a blessing to my generation. I will be a blessing to the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Understand that a life without purpose is a worthless life. It's a useless life. A life without purpose is a life without meaning. Your life will be meaningful. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as we look at this life that counts, I'm looking at three points in particular one the creative purpose of god in a life that comes the creative purpose of god why did god create you why did that why did god make you why did god send you to this world the creative purpose of god in the life that matters point number two the connecting power of god in the life that matters the connecting power of God in that life. And that means as you connect with people, as people connect with you, they can see the purpose of your creation. They can see the purpose of your living. Number three, the coronating privileges of the life that counts. The life that counts. Uh, once again, I declare today, your life will count in Jesus' name. I'm looking at the book of John, chapter 15, verses 7 to 11. John Chapter 15, from verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Hence is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so that ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my, in my love. Verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I need an amen there. I need a better amen. Turn to someone and say, in the name of Jesus, your joy will be full. Your joy, turn to another person and say, by the power of the Lord, your joy will be full in the name of Jesus. For your joy to be full, understand, and we're going to look into this passage again. Understand, there are some key things and salient points in that verse of the scripture that we have read. It says, if you abide in me, abide in me. That means the life that counts is going to be the life that abides in the Lord abides in the will of God, abides in the word of God, abides in the ways of God, and that life will count and will matter in life and in eternity. And then it says, when you abide in me, because you are in the will of the Father, in the will of the Master, you know what he wants you to do. You know how he wants you to live. And with that understanding, with that power, with that enablement, he's able. Somebody say he's able. Is able to make you live that life. Then he now says there is something that comes with that life of God, and that is the power 
to live like God, then he said, you will ask, if you abide in me, you will ask whatsoever you will, and it shall be done. Somebody's prayer will be answered here today. In the name of Jesus. And then he went further to say that in this is my father glorified. In what is my father glorified? In the life that counts. In what is my father glorified? In the life that has a testimony. In what is my father glorified? In the life that is prevailing and victorious and succeeding. In what is my father glorified? In obedience to the word of the mouth. Of the Lord and the will of the Father, he says, In this is my Father glorified. In your life, God will be glorified. In what is the Father glorified? The God of heaven is glorified in the fact that you are not a barren woman, you are not a barren man. You are a fruitful person, you are a productive person, you are a progressive person. Your spiritual life, prog progressive, productive. Your physical life, productive. Material life, productive. Financial life, productive. Matrimonial life, productive. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will be fruitful in Jesus' name. And then he went further to say, as my father has loved me, so have I loved you. When your life counts, when your life matters, you'll be the delights of the father. The light of the Father. And then he's now saying, you also now continue in my love. He said, if you, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments. So we see from here that the life that matters must be a saved life. A saved life. Except a man be born again. Born again. Born again. Born again. Born again. Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Please say one moment. Except a man be born again. There was a day you had the word of the Lord. You became convicted in your heart. And you gave your life to Christ. And then you became born again. Praise God. But then understand, that is the beginning of your work with the Lord. As you continue your work with the Lord, there are all the things, the nature of your life, the attitude, the conduct, the character, the behavior, the manner of life that also needs to be changed and transformed by the virtue of that encounter you had with Christ Jesus. And so, if a man uh, is born again, then you see changes and differences in the life of that individual. And it says, except a man be born again. Born again. Ask us question. Other than just that first day you met the Lord, what else needs to be changed in your life? Except a man be born again. Except a man be converted. That is what born again is about. Except a man be transformed. Except a man be renewed. Except a man be turned around. He cannot see the kingdom of God. That attitude. Except it changes. That conduct. That character. That behavior. Except it changes. Except you are converted from it. And changed from it. And then your life begins to count and to matter. That tongue of yours. Except it is sanctified and converted, then you cannot be who God really wants you to be in the life that counts must be a safe life. It must be a surrendered life. Then it's not my will anymore, but the will of the master, the will of the Lord, the will of my creator. It's not my way, but this way at all time. Such a life must be a submissive life. A safe life, surrendered life, Submissive life is scriptural life. You live your life not on the basis of the dictates of the society anymore, but by the dictates of the word of God. Understand, it said, if my word abide in you, if my word abide in you, if my word abide in you, that means you are a Bible-based brother, a Bible-based sister. You're not saying 
because the youth over there behaved this way, behaved that way, whether there was repercussion or not, immediately, then I can behave that way. No, no. The word of God abides in you. Because of that worker in the church, or that member of the church did this or did that, is that the right thing to do? Is that the word of God? Is that the will of, will of God? That thing, that person did, was the heart of God gladdened or saddened. That thing, that person did, did it create problem or blessing? You know it is wrong yourself. Why then are you imitating wrong thing? Let your life come. Your life will come. I say your life will come. So you are a scriptural person, then your life will come. Because your life will be like a living Bible, a walking Bible. Because others will see Jesus in you. If your life is going to count, your life is going to be a supplicating life. You will be a supplicating person, a man of prayer. The, he said, whatsoever you shall ask, you will receive. You will receive. That means you are a praying person. Before you step out of your house in the morning, you pray. You got your place of work. Before you began to do the work, you pray. You came to church. The first thing you do when you come to church is not talking and chatting and playing with anybody. The first thing you do is you go on your knee and you pray. You know some people, when they come to church, the first thing they do is they come to the altar, they kneel down, and then they commit themselves, their life, and everything to the Lord and say, Lord, I am now here in your presence. But you know some people, they come to church, it's talking, it's chatting, it's playing, it's business that they get into all the time. But when you live a life that counts, a life that matters, you'll be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, the we know that this one pray, you will pray. I said you will pray. The life that counts will be a life that serves. It's a life of service. A life of service. And understand the ladder of greatness is a ladder of service. The more you serve, the higher you go. The more you commit, the higher you go. The more you sacrifice, the higher you go. So, a life that counts, or the life that counts is a sacrificing life. You make sacrifices uh, at all times. Such a life is a sowing life. You sow into the lives of people. You sow into your own life. You sow into your own family. That means you are not a selfish life. You are not living a selfish life. It's not a self-centered life. Uh, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. If a man abide in me, that means... To abide in the word of the Lord, you learn that word. You learn it. You know, there are some people that come to church, they learn the word, but the word does not do anything in their life. You don't only learn it, you live by it. You live by it. That is the point at which, by which, and through which, your life will begin to come. The life that comes. And so, a time like this, somebody, somewhere, somehow, why praising God for job? Praising God for life. Praising God for health. Praising God for family. They also will praise God for you that this person's life touched me. Your life will touch others. Your life will impact others in Jesus' name. And so, you put the word of God into practice every day. And then you love it. You learn it. You learn the word. You live it. You live that word out for others to see. Let others see Jesus in you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and then glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you learn it, you live it out, and then you love it. Everybody knows you love the Lord. You love the word of God. Anything you do, everything you do is on the basis of the Bible and you don't play the word of, with the word of God. You don't try with the word of God and you don't do anything contrary to the word of God and God honors those that honors his word in Jesus name the connecting powers 
Point number two, the connecting power of life that counts. The connecting power of the life that can understand. The purpose is for you to live the life of God. The purpose is to glorify the name of the Lord. The purpose for you is for you to manifest the, the, the essence of creation in your life and be a blessing to your generation and touch other people and be a burning and shining light for others. Uh, that is the blessing that comes from your life and through your life. When you come to church, when you come to church, uh, you want to be a model for others to follow. A model in your dressing. You know, many times uh, people say things well, dressing is something we don't talk about. No, we talk about it. It's all part of worship. It's all part of worship. We see the idol worshippers, uh, the way they do the things they do, and they have their own way of dressing. We in the Lord in the church, we have our own way of dressing. Our God is a modest God, it's a holy God, it's a righteous God. He is not a God of immodesty. And so we talk about that. You'll be an example the way you live your life. And those of you that are young adults, you live your life not on the basis of the society where you find yourself. Joseph was a stranger in a strange land. He was a sojourner there. As a matter of fact, he was a slave. He was taken as a slave, sold as a slave to that place. And Joseph, as a teenager, did not say, well, no father, no mother. I can live anyhow. I can do anything. Joseph lived for God. Young people, teenagers, young adults, youth, you have no excuse. You have no excuse whatsoever to live immodestly. You have no excuse to live carelessly. You have no excuse to dishonor the name of the Lord and abuse the body that God has given unto you. You have no excuse because you're a student in the college. We went to college before and then we see other people that still goes to college. Even here, we see them irrespective of their color, irrespective of their culture. We see them, the white, the black, the foreigners and the indigenous. We see them that fears the Lord, that loves the Lord, the life that counts, the life that counts, the life that counts. Your life will count in Jesus' name. And you parents, that because of the environment, you forgot who you are. You forgot where you are coming from. You forgot who you are serving. And your life now does not count anymore. You are no more a blessing to the generations that are coming. You will not only give account for yourself. You will give account for the lives that you are sending to hellfire. You will give account for the lives that you are misleading. You will give account for the lives of the children that God gave, on, gave unto you because you want to please your children. Because you want them around you. If God does not keep them for you, who is going to keep them? You have no power to keep them. No matter what you do, they may end up becoming a sorrow to you at the end of the day. But I declare your children will be children of blessing. In the name of Jesus. But do your part. Do your part. Do your part. You know, Eli didn't want to offend the children. Eli didn't want to for them to think, I am tough. I am hard. I am difficult. Uh, uh, children, I am hearing the news uh, that uh, you are doing this and you are doing that. Uh, if a man offend man, uh, uh, you can go to God. But if you, that is not enough. You can do better than that priest. You can do better than that prophet. You can do better than that father, mother. You can do better than that. Do something that we can't hear on earth and eternity. Do something that your children will remember for life. You know, I was somewhere recently, and then something wrong was about to happen. And I saw it. And then I sent for the person concerned, and I said, you know, you can't do that. And it was a large place. Hundreds of people were there. And uh, it wasn't my occasion, but I know that this is going to affect the name of the Lord. This is going to affect the glory of God. This is going to affect the lives of other people. And so I said, no, you can't do that. And the person was trying to give me reasons upon reasons upon reasons. And eventually I said, okay, go and do whatever you want to do. I said, I call you so as to deliver you from trouble. But since you want trouble, go ahead. Eventually, eventually, uh, God helped him and God will help you. 
I said, God will help you. And he didn't do that thing. He tried to cut it off and everything. And then the following day, he came to me. You see, people will try you. They will put pressure on you. They know what they are doing. They know it is wrong. But they are trying to get your stamp to stamp it. And I stood my ground. The following day, he came and said, Pastor, thank you so much for standing your ground yesterday. He said, if you had not stood your ground, I never would have been able to stand. People are counting on you. People are leaning on you. You will not be disappointed to your generation. I say you will not be disappointed to your generation. In the name of Jesus, let your life count. Let your life count. So the, point, the second point now, the connecting power. Connecting power of lives that count. Abraham had counter, uh, uh, encounter with Lord. Uh, and that affected the life of Lord all through eternity till today. That brought deliverance and salvation to Lord and his family. Jacob had an encounter with Laban. The life that counts. Don't just live as a nobody. Live an impact anywhere you go, everywhere you go. Let there be a stamp of your visitation in that very place. Let them know I was there. And if for any reason you are not there, they will know when this person was here, this cannot happen. That cannot happen. Nobody would have been able to do this because you are there. Your life will count. And Jacob was there with Laban. Understand something about Jacob. Jacob wasn't a perfect man, but Jacob was a man that partners with God. Jacob was a man that prayed. Jacob was a man that trusts in the Lord. Understand, at the time of Jacob, there was no Bible for Jacob to read. At the time of Jacob, there was no preacher, there was no pastor for Jacob to listen to, to sit down under his tutelage like you are sitting down today. And Jacob, in spite of that, when he had issue, he will always run to God and God always hear him. Look at what we read, that book of John, and uh, see what it says, chapter 15. It says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That then means that when you are a man of prayer, you'll be a man of power. I said you'll be a man of power. So was Jacob, and something happened. Jacob became a man of anointing, a man of unction and of power. And everywhere Jacob got into, miracle was follow him. It looked like it looks like I'm looking at somebody here that miracle will follow. Who is that individual? Who is that individual? So shall it be with you in Jesus' name. Anywhere you go, miracle will follow you. Signs and wonders will follow you. Anointing will follow you. Blessing will follow you. Victory will follow you. Success will follow you. In the name of Jesus, God is able and more than able to make it happen in Jesus' name. Through Jacob, the family of Laban was blessed. Through Jacob, the business of Laban was blessed since you came in. What can you say is a blessing you brought in? Which I see it. I said which I see it. You know why I said so? Quickly turn your Bible, turn your Bible very quickly uh, to the book of uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. No, sorry. Romans, 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 not Acts. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 19. Verse 19. Acts, uh, sorry, did I keep saying Acts? You know why I keep on saying Acts? Acts means activity. The activity of miracle is about to happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. So, what is this passage now? Romans 8, 19. It says, For the honest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is waiting for you. I said the world is waiting for you. You will not be a disappointment. You will not be a failure. In the name of Jesus. So then, make up your mind. By the grace of God, I am a blessing. I am a blessing. Anywhere I go, everywhere I go, blessing is follow me. Miracle is follow me. Signs and wonders are follow me. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. And that is exactly what happened to Abraham. 
Abraham became a covenant child. Jacob became a covenant child. Joseph became a covenant child. Just for the sake of Joseph in Egypt. Though there was famine everywhere in the world of their time. Egypt became blessed. Blessing came their force. Wisdom came. God came. Preservation came. Joseph, for his sake, Egypt was preserved. For his sake, his entire family, 90 people were preserved. Through you, I declare, preservation is coming to humanity. You'll be a blessing. The life that counts, the life that counts, you know, through the life of Peter. Through the life of Peter. The family of Cornelius became the first non Jewish family receiving the Holy Ghost. The, the, the people, they call it the, 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 the Pentecost of the Gentiles. True woman. Through woman, I declare in the name of Jesus, through you, the families of the earth shall be blessed. You will be a blessing. Your life will be a blessing. Your ministry a blessing. Your business a blessing. Your family a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Peter was a blessing. He was a blessing. Not that alone, Paul the apostle became a blessing. And you look at Peter, you look at Paul, where they are. now please pay attention here. Do you know there, are some, there were some of the disciples that you never heard of anything they actually did? Look at the scripture. You are hearing about John. You are hearing about Peter. You are hearing about the rest of them. Even Philip the evangelist, you could tell what he did. And yet there were some disciples... There is no clear record of what they did. Your life will matter. I declare you will not be like a vapor that appears for a moment and vanish without the trace in Jesus' name. Anywhere you go, you will be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Look at even that little child in the book of John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Let's quickly look at it. Uh, and then from verses 1 to 6, uh, the little boy, maybe we'll read it later on, uh, became a blessing to those around him. Two fishes and five loaves of bread. What do you have that you are hoarding? What do you have that you are keeping? You will be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Look at Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He was a blessing. The connecting power. The power is there resident in you. The life that counts. People will be looking for you. People will be searching for you. Have, you. have you seen a case or situation whereby some people are having a meeting and they say, this meeting is not complete until so and so person comes. Have you heard of a meeting like that before? Such will be your case in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 38, eh, that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all manner of sicknesses. Amen. And delivering them that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Somebody just means that. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will walk with you in Jesus' name. The Lord will walk through you in Jesus' name. The coronating privilege of the life that counts. The life that counts. Reward is coming your way. In the name, your labor will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. You know, Peter looked at Jesus and said, we've been following you. We've been serving you. We've been obeying your word. We've been doing your bidding. If a man abide in my word, and my word abide in him. What is the result? Anything you ask the Father, it will be done unto you. Amen? 
And so Peter came around in Matthew chapter 19, verses 27 to 29. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have thereof? What shall we have therefore? Pay attention. You will not serve God in vain in Jesus' name. And Jesus said unto, unto them, and pay attention here. Who asked the question? Some didn't get it. Who asked the question? Who was Jesus not talking to? Everybody. The blessing of God is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye, ye, who is that talking about? Which have followed me in the generation when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. You also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, and everyone, and everyone that has forsaken Tell me, houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Now you see why you must not, because of anybody, jeopardize eternity. The more you give up, the more you receive. The more you labor, the more you are blessed. The more you sacrifice, the more you are multiplied. And the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord will preserve you in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. As his work shall be. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31. Say, from verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. And the goat on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand. Come. Who is that? Come. Who is he talking to? I think I can see my name there. Ye blessed of my father, that is your portion. Inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungry, the life that matters. Look at what they do. The life of sacrifice, the life, the life of service, the life of sowing. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hunger, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, when saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee, or when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee. Verse 40. Everybody, let's read together. One to go. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, tell me. Turn to someone and say, In the name of Jesus, your life will count. By the power of the Lord, you will be a blessing to your generation. In the name of Jesus, your generation, I say, your generation will be a blessing unto you. In the name of Jesus. Because you will not labor in vain. The Bible says, 
um, give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over shall men give unto your bosom. And as you keep blessing others, blessing coming your way. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Amen. And Second John, verse chapter 1, verse 6 says, Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, that we receive a full reward. What kind of reward do you want to get? A full reward. A full reward. That's why you cannot, you must not, you should not give up the faith. Don't let anything disturb you, annoy you, anger you. No, 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 no. A little correction is for your good. Amen? I said it's for your good. The life that can't, the life that can't, uh, that is the life that God will give unto you in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Second Timothy 4, 8 says, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Everybody, get your Bible and stand up. Open it. Don't close it. Don't close it. We are there. Second Timothy. I want you to do something here. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Everybody stand up. I said chapter 4 verse 8. Chapter 4 verse 8. What chapter? What verse? Verse 8. Shall we all read together? Everybody. One, two, go. Henceforth, there is lit up for me a crown of righteousness. Start all over again. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. One more time. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. A better one. Amen. Close your eyes and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, I will not lose my reward. By the power of the Lord, I will not labor in vain. For the glory of the name of the Lord, my life will count. For the blessing of humanity, my life will count. My life will count. My life will count. My life will count. Any hindrance in my life, any obstacle, every obstacle, Lord, take them away. Make me a blessing, O oh Lord. Use me for the glory of your name. My life will count. My life will be a testimony. My life will be a testimony. My life will be a blessing. My prayers will be answered. I will not pray in vain. I will not serve in vain. I will not worship in vain. In the name of Jesus. I will love the Lord. I will fear the Lord. I will follow the Lord. I will be fulfilled in God. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. More than able. More than able. More than able. More than able. Every limitation in my life, the able God will take them away. The purpose for which God has created me will be fulfilled in my life. My crown of righteousness, I will not miss it. This is a month of thanksgiving. Every day of my life, we give thanks to the Lord. 
my mouth will give praise unto the Lord. My services will give praise unto the Lord. I read to you from Romans chapter 8 verse 19, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the Son of God. The world will not wait for me in vain. The world will not wait for me in vain. But understand, I told you, you must be born again. You must be saved. You must be submissive unto the Lord. You must surrender to the will of God, to the word of God. You must. You must. Every day of your life, you must serve the Lord. You must do it heartily. You must do it happily. You must do it willingly. You must do it conscientiously. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Father, glorious Lord, I bring your children before you. For as many this morning that are desirous of living for you, living a life that is pleasing unto you, a life of holiness, righteousness, and of purity, Dear Lord, I pray, grant them these heart desires of theirs in Jesus' name. Take their sins away. You are more than able. You are more than able. The rising and falling in their life, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. The weaknesses in their spiritual life, I cancel in the name of Jesus. The joy of the devil over them. I got you again. I got you again. Oh Lord, I put an end to it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Father, Lord God of heaven, King of glory, you created your children for a purpose. I pray the purpose of creation in their life be fulfilled in Jesus' name. The vices of the enemy, plans of the devil, powers of darkness, I cancel and destroy now in the name of Jesus. In their personal life, let there be miracle. In their matrimonial life, let there be miracle. In their academic life, let there be miracle. In their social life, let there be miracle. In their finances, let there be miracle. Oh Lord, oh God, in every area of their life, wherever they need miracle, oh Lord, do it for them in Jesus' name. And make them in turn to be a miracle. Anywhere they go, make them a miracle. Oh God of heaven, Joseph in Egypt was a miracle. Jacob in, in Pedan era was a miracle. Abraham to Lot was a miracle. Jesus to the world was a miracle. Peter to the Gentile was a miracle. Paul to humanity was a miracle. Lord, I declare the lives of your children will count in Jesus' name. The miracle working power of the living God come upon your people now in the name of Jesus. Every plantations of the enemy, every power of darkness, I cancel and destroy now in Jesus name. Is there anyone there that is sick? Oh Lord, oh God of heaven, by virtue of this prayer this morning and the life that can't, oh Lord, oh God, I command in the name of Jesus that can't, more than any other name, sicknesses, infirmities, pack your load, get out now in the name of Jesus. I come right now against the covenant of death in the life of the people of the Lord. I break you now in Jesus' name. Spirit of failure and disappointment, stagnation and retrogression. I come against you by that name that counts, the only name that counts, the name of Jesus. At the wish, you must bow. I command, get out now in the name of Jesus. I come against any covenant and every covenant, evil covenant, satanic covenant in the lives of your people. Oh God, I break those covenants right now. I destroy evil covenants right now in the name of Jesus. 
any cause upon the life of your people. No matter who has placed the cause, I come in the name of that name that counts. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I come against every cause in the life of your people now in the name of Jesus. Some of them are carrying the cause because of the family they came from, because of the foundation of their life. Oh Lord, oh God, I change that foundation right now. I reverse that foundation right now because there is a foundation which has been laid, which no other man can lay than that which has been laid, which is the foundation of Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, oh God, I command their generation, oh Lord, oh God, their bloodline, their birthright, be founded upon the foundation of Christ now in the name of Jesus. So then, so then, as there is generational cause, there is generational blessing. I said there is generational blessing. I said there is generational blessing. I command generational blessing. Come upon your people. Come upon your people. Come upon their children. Come upon their family. Come upon their household. Come upon their finances. And anything they lay their hands upon to do shall be blessed. Anywhere they go shall be blessed. Anyone that touch them shall be blessed. Anyone they touch shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, be a blessing. I said be a blessing. For the rest of the year, be a blessing. For the rest of your life, be a blessing. To your children, be a blessing. To your spouse, be a blessing. Blessings of the Lord come upon us, your people, in Jesus' name. Amen.